Today, the smart money is in Bitcoin. Bitcoin's about a $500 billion network. How big can it get? Well, 500 trillion, a thousand X bigger in today's dollars. There's about $950 trillion worth of wealth out there. 350 trillion worth of real estate. Half of it is just capital or monetary premium. $300 trillion worth of bonds. Half of it is just a monetary premium. 100 trillion worth of equity. Half of it is a monetary premium. 11, 12 trillion worth of gold. 80% of it is a monetary premium. So as the world gets smarter, people are gonna sell those things because they don't make good money. Gold is awful money, right? It's just awful money. If you store your money in gold, you're losing half of your wealth every 35 years. So why would you do that, right? It's not working. In the last two and a half years, gold is down 5%, Bitcoin is up 150%. Michael Saylor believes that Bitcoin could literally 1,000x from where it is currently. The MicroStrategy founder and ex-CEO argues that Bitcoin is a black hole that is slowly going to suck up all the money in the world and already all the smart money knows where it's going. In his latest interview, Saylor expertly breaks down the question, is it too late to invest in Bitcoin? Make sure to stick around to the end of the video because this is a masterclass by Saylor. Also guys, if you want to stay most up to date on the crypto world, I send out a daily 5 minute crypto newsletter that covers expert predictions, on-chain data breakdowns and breaking news all for free. Click the first link in the description, enter your email and join 2000 others to become a better crypto investor right now. Here's Michael Saylor on why Bitcoin could truly 1000x. You know, New York was uh, the greatest city in North America by about 1776 and you would have been late to the party but the question is would you buy a city block in new york in 1776 or if you waited till 1876 and you were really late to the party and new york was the greatest city in north america was it too late to buy a city block in new york city in 1876 or how about 1976 if you were 200 years late to New York City. If you look at the property values of New York in 1976, what you'll find is you would be rich if you had actually bought real estate in New York in 1976. So the answer to the issue is in every economic system, every economic empire, there's always one city, one place that every one network where people gravitate to. And in the ancient Med, it was Carthage for a while, and then it was Rome, and then it was Venice, and eventually the French Empire terminated in Paris and the British Empire terminated in London. And then eventually the, uh, uh, the American uh, economic empire terminated in New York. And there are reasons why. It's just everybody comes together in that place. Even today, New York is still the economic epicenter of the United States. And so Bitcoin represents the economic epicenter of cyberspace. It is the one place where if I want to create a, a digital application, if I want to move money at the speed of light and I live in Singapore, I'm using Bitcoin. If I live in Paris, I'm using Bitcoin. If I live in Moscow, I'm using Bitcoin. If I live in China, I'm using Bitcoin. So you see everybody in the world that actually believes in the idea of a digital asset that wants a that wants to build this as a treasury reserve asset, they're going to gravitate toward the most powerful network. Why? Because everybody else is gravitating there. Why, why do people go to New York? Because the smart money is in New York. I could go to New York 20 years ago. I could take 10 meetings. I could raise a billion dollars in two days. So why would we be so stupid as to go to New York? Well, because that's where the money is. The money is in New York. So I went. And what did I bring with me? I brought my brain power and I built my business there. And, and so I then reinforced that network effect. Today, the smart money is in Bitcoin. Bitcoin's about a $500 billion network. How big can it get? Well, 500 trillion, a thousand X bigger in today's dollars. There's about $950 trillion worth of wealth out there. 350 trillion worth of real estate. Half of it is just capital or monetary premium. $300 trillion worth of bonds. Half of it is just a monetary premium. $100 trillion worth of equity. Half of it is a monetary premium. $11, $12 trillion worth of gold. 80% of it is a monetary premium. So as the world gets smarter, people are going to sell those things because they don't make good money. Gold is awful money, right? It's just awful money. If you store your money in gold, you're losing half of your wealth every 35 years. 
So why would you do that, right? It's not working. In the last two and a half years, gold is down 5%. Bitcoin is up 150%, right? The smart money is clearly running away from it. And in time, people will dump their gold. And when they dump their gold, Bitcoin will jump by a factor of 10. So the answer to the question of why you should buy a Bitcoin is a Bitcoin represents one block in, Cy in cyber New York, which has got 21 million blocks for all of eternity. And in the year 2500, people are going to be moving to cyber New York, right? I mean, New York was founded a long time ago, right? The only thing that keeps people from continuing to come into the, the great city, whether it's the New York or the London or the Paris, is when the economic flows move from the physical domain to the digital domain. As long as you did business in an analog world where you had to like put on a suit and walk into a building and meet with people, then you're going to see London and Paris and Tokyo and Hong Kong be great cities. When the, the economy moves to the digital realm and you don't have to put on a suit and walk into a building and you can have a Zoom meeting of 20 people in 20 places and raise a billion dollars in a day right? Then some of the economic energy drains out of the city networks and it drains into the crypto network. And so buying a Bitcoin, whether it's uh, one Bitcoin or, or a million Satoshis or a hundred thousand Satoshis or one Satoshi is just like buying into New York City 250 years ago. Yeah, sure, you're late. People got there a hundred years before you, okay? Well, in this case, someone got there 14 years before you. You know, I once tweeted, you know, fa very famously, I said, I think Bitcoin is, you know, going the way of online gambling. And I think Bitcoin is like a hundred dollars coin then. Okay. And I was wrong, but I didn't need it. I was wrong. When I needed Bitcoin, Bitcoin was $9,500, $10,000 a coin. And so I bought it at $10,000 instead of $100. People will buy it at a hundred thousand. They will buy it at a million. They will probably buy it at 10 million, right? Because you know, how much does it cost for an apartment in Manhattan? People pay $10 million for 4,000 square feet, $10 million, right? All of Manhattan was purchased for what, like $29 in beads or something? <laughs> if you roll the clock back, some nothing. You can't really get caught up in what the unit price is. You have to ask the question, what is the dominant network in cyberspace? And Bitcoin is the dominant network. And the reason it's the dominant network is a bunch of things. One, all the smart money arrived there, right? If all the smart people that wanted a decentralized, non-sovereign store of value crypto network, if they all showed up, looked at 10,000 choices and picked this one and put all their money on it, right? That's like all the smart people, they showed up in America and they picked New York. You know why they picked New York? New York is sitting on 200 million year old granite, schist, right? It's indestructible as an island, Manhattan. It's sitting between a bunch of rivers. It's sitting in front of one of the world's great harbors. And it's sitting at the mouth of the Hudson River, which is a mile wide, deep, and it goes straight right into the heart of the country. So if you were picking a port city, was the most rock solid, geographically sound, logistically sound, you know, well-engineered port you could possibly imagine, you know? And so it matters. And Bitcoin represents the same thing. Bitcoin is backed by 400 exahash of digital energy. And 400 exahash of digital energy makes it the most powerful computer network in the world. And so if I'm going to put a billion dollars on it, I would want the indestructible, nation-state resistant, fault-tolerant, most powerful computer network in the world. I wouldn't want the second most powerful network, and I wouldn't want a network a hundred times less powerful. I want a network where you would need every computer in the world to slow it down 10%, and you would need all the electricity in the world to slow it down 10%. And that's what Bitcoin represents because of the way it's engineered. It represents an indestructible, unstoppable, most powerful computer network. And so if you're looking right now, you, you shouldn't look at it as, well, I wanted to buy something cheap and wait for it to go up 100x, so I better buy something that's a penny stock. Like, the, you know, there is a meme we call penny stocks, right? The whole joke of a penny stock is, if you really wanted a penny stock, we can manufacture thousands of them. That's the theme of, uh, of the movie Boiler Room. You know, P the Wolf of Wall Street did that. It's been going on for hundreds of years. People manufacture a penny stock and they tell you, you'll buy it for a penny. It's going to go up to five bucks. You're going to make 500 extra money. That's not what you want. 
you want a cheap apartment, I'll sell you a $4 million apartment in New York, which looks expensive, or I'll sell you a $42,000 apartment, you know, in some random suburb, you know, in a third world country. But the point really is, which is the better real estate investment? It's not a matter of the, the cost to buy the thing. It's a question of how secure is the network you're buying into. And everybody will tell you, you buy the beachfront property in Palm Beach or Miami Beach, you're better off to buy a house on land than to buy the apartment. You're better off to buy the apartment in the good building than the bad building. And you're better off to buy the apartment in the good neighborhood than the bad neighborhood. And uh, you're better off to buy the real estate in the capital city of Rome or London or Paris or New York than to buy the real estate in the 13th biggest city in the country when the inflation comes. So that, that would be my answer to that question. So there's Michael Saylor, who truly believes Bitcoin could a thousand times from where it's currently at. Saylor, the founder and former CEO of MicroStrategy, presented a compelling analogy of Bitcoin as a black hole, gradually absorbing all the money in the world, a scenario he believes the smart money is already betting on. If you look at Bitcoin from the perspective that it's digital real estate, an equivalent to prime blocks in Manhattan, it's clear that it's not too late. Imagine being able to invest in a new asset class just 14 years from its inception and are thinking it's too late. If you want to stay on top of the latest in the crypto sphere, don't forget to subscribe to my 5 minute daily crypto newsletter. It's absolutely free and packed with expert predictions, intricate on chain data breakdowns, and the latest breaking news. Click the first link in the description, enter your email, and join a growing community of over 2,000 informed crypto investors. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one and as always, all the best. Oh.